you've seen I've been sent these by Army Painter. Now, obviously I don't want this video to be too long, so we're gonna remove the monster paint set and we'll look at that in a separate video because there's only so much you can talk about about paint in one video. So we have got the starter brush set here. These are Null's Marvelous brush set. Now these retail at nine euros and 99 pence, which it works out about eight pound 82, you know, in pound sterling. So we'll have a little look at these first. Um, there's not much you can say about paint brushes really, but we'll have a little look anyway. So with these paint brushes, we have got the D&D &D logo on the side. Now we've got a dry brush, which dry brushes, as we know, are a quick and easy way to highlight our miniatures. A lot of pro painters don't like using these because they, they think it gives a poor quality and you know it, it's, it's basically not as good. So first thing that stands out to my mind about these paint brushes is the quality. It's a different quality compared to the, the original white brushes that, that Army Painter do. So that's something to take into consideration. But I think personally, these are geared towards beginners or people just generally wanting to paint up the D&D &D miniatures really quickly and really easy. And, you know, so really they just need some cheap brushes. So for £8, 82 pence for free brushes, it's not too bad. So that's that dry brush there. We've now got the the standard brush, uh, sorry, the base base coat brush and the detail brush. Now, obviously, we know base coating, that's, that doesn't really require any technique or, or skill, really. You just need to thin your paints and do two thin coats. So this, obviously, this brush is ideal for that. And you maybe could do it, use it for a bit of layering as well. And then, obviously, you've got the detail brush at the top there, which is ideal for, you know, painting eyes, and which I don't really do. But painting eyes and painting, you know, belt buckles, belts, tattoos, you know, whatnot, such, such stuff like that. So that, that's that, that's essentially the paintbrush set reviewed in a couple of minutes. But that's that's eight pound eighty two. It's really cheap, that really, isn't it? Well, two pound fifty ish. I am. Um, well, about two pound sixty of a paintbrush, isn't it? That's not too bad. So you put that to one so side, and I'll probably use them. In, a, in an upcoming painting tutorial, hopefully in the future. Now this is the Nulls Marvelous Pigment Adventure paint set. Obviously it's, it's a Dungeons and Dragons special, um, which is obviously provided by Army Painter and Gale Force 9, Wizards of the Coast, who obviously own Dungeons and Dragons. Now let's have a little look what's inside this beautiful box. Now, we have got, firstly, a limited edition exclusive miniature. This is Mint, Minsk and there's a little sidekick Boo which is on this little hamster there on the side. Now, this guy comes from the Baldur's Gate video game which I played the, the PS2 version of that but I'm guessing this is from like maybe a PC game version because I've never seen him before but he looks like a nice little model and obviously you can use him in your Dungeons and Dragons game and the, the cape's fairly detailed, so is the base. Um, can we zoom in on his face a little bit? Let's have a look. His face isn't, isn't too bad, is it? I, I think it's nicely detailed. So we'll put him, we'll put him to one side. And then let's have a look at the paint. So you get a starter paintbrush in this as well. So this quality of this paintbrush isn't gonna be as good as the other ones. It's literally for people starting out you will make mistakes. You will you will mess your paintbrushes up. So having a cheap and disposable paintbrush is ideal for that. So it seems let me have a little. The, the hair seems like you know like a like a sable hair maybe. It doesn't seem like a synthet synthetic brush. So I suppose yeah, that's a good thing really. But I, I feel as if I could. I don't know, I prefer the quality of, of the white ones. Now I've got the white ones here, which I bought in the main big massive mega paint set. And I, I just love the handles for this. I love the um, the triangular handles in this, you know, I, I find it easier to grip. So that's something to take into consideration. So that's your paintbrush. And then we've got different paint uh, paints here. Let's 
which these paints come in smaller pots, which I did notice. Um, does it say on the side how, what the size is? I can't see what size it is, but we know it's made in Denmark. We, we knew that I mean, paints was European anyway. There's a website there. Um, no, well, it doesn't say, but anyway, these are all 100% match up to um, the, the war paints from the Army Painting range, so that's a good thing. Uh, these are in a little, a bit, a little bit smaller. I'm guessing these are probably 8mm, maybe, I'd guess. So this is a Bugbear Brown. We've got Abysmal Black. We have got um, Fluff, Flumph Pink which is obviously your skin colour, skin tone. Um, angelic Yellow. Dragonfire Red. You've got a grey primer, which comes in handy. So obviously, with this set, you've got your miniature here. So you can prime them straight away and get, get paint them. That's pretty cool. We have got... Um, crack and Bloom which is a nice lovely blue there. Treatant Green. Treant Green. Mithril Silver, which looks like a lovely, lovely silver colour. And then what's this one here? Lawful White. So, I've been lucky enough to use these paints before I did the review. I wanted to try them out and test them. And, and to be honest with you guys, I give it a thumbs up. They, they seem to react a lot different to the, the war paints. And um, there's obviously a lot of people have, have um, identified the fact that the war paints separate very easily. Now with these, I literally shook them for a couple of seconds and they were, they were ready to be used on my D&D miniatures. Well, they're not D&D miniatures, they're miniatures that I'm using for my D&D, the Grenadier miniatures. But anyway, these paints were pretty much ready to be used straight out from the pot with just a quick shake, quick couple of seconds shake, which I think is amazing, considering that, you know, the war paints ones, you need to do, you need to give them a bloody damn good shake. Doesn't mean that they're rubbish, doesn't mean that they're poor quality, it just means that whatever, I actually personally think that they've, they've been filled up too much in the pot. That's what I think. Um, and, and maybe that's why they can't mix properly because it's, there's too much, too much in there and there's too much pressure building up. But anyway, these have been used straight from the pot the other week and I like them, I love them. I can't wait to continue using them. Uh, hopefully I'll be doing a, a painting tutorial using some of these in the future. So guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know what you think of Army Painter. Do you like them? Do you use them? Uh, would you consider buying them in the future? Um, I personally use Army Painter quite a lot. Obviously I have Citadel paints. I've got, um, um, basically I've got pretty much a, a large range of, of paints. I can use Citadel, um, uh, um, AK Interactive, um, Mix Ammo, Ammo Mix, all sorts of paints, but I do like using these. I've got Vallejo paints as well. And I personally think you should try out all different paints and you then make your decision. But personally, I would continue using these and I probably would purchase this. Um, I've got a D&D group going at the moment, which I would advise them to, to possibly purchase these. And as you know, I've got my own shop. So I will be in, in the future stocking these. Um, they're pretty much, they're, they're really nice, they're small, and, and they're ideal for people who just want to paint one miniature. So thanks for watching again, guys. Sorry for to, to go on a little bit more. See you soon. Tra.